channel. This video is going to be a bit of a January 2023 flip through and talking about some of my faves for this month as well. My name is Sarah Jane and I create videos about stationery and journaling. So if that's something that you're interested in, why not consider subscribing to the channel? Um, if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much and welcome back. So if you watched my 2023 planner setup, which I will link up here, you will have seen this lovely purple Finsbury Filofax. This was what my original setup was in. However, <laughs> I changed that pretty quickly. Um, there's nothing wrong with this planner. I, I do absolutely love it. I still think it's absolutely gorgeous. The color's amazing. But I just, I don't know, I had bought this other planner a few months before this one um, that I'd found in an op shop or a thrift shop as they're called in North America or a charity shop as they're called in my homeland. And I'll show you that now. And it is this one here. So this is a Filofax Kensington. It's in the lovely burgundy color. So yeah, so I got this one from an op shop for like $8. This was made up until the early 2000s, I think. Um, and this did have a little registration certificate inside it for 2001. So it's at least 22 years old, but it's in great condition. It's really beautiful. And I had just found myself really thinking about this planner and I was just like, mm, I couldn't get it out of my head. And so I switched, I switched to this one. And I wish I could say the planner was the only thing that has changed about my <laughs> setup being as it's only January. Um, but it's not. I have actually changed quite a few things. So we'll have a look inside the planner now. So I still have my cover page here. On the other side of that, a photo and a couple of bits of ephemera. My number's on the other side of that pen as well. And what else? So I have written in my 2023 goals in here as intended, the inbox. So in my inbox section, kind of using that. I mean, most of these the post notes have gone. So the post-it notes have been really useful there. This kind of inbox running to-do list, it didn't really work out. I don't know if I just need to give it more time, but I think I'm just so used to planning in a certain way. It just didn't really feel very natural for me to have this here. It felt like I was kind of going backwards and forwards too much between like my planner and then the to-do list at the front of my file effects. So yeah, it didn't really work out. As you can see, this is mostly stuff from Christmas and I haven't really updated it. So yeah so i think i'm probably going to take the inbox section out watch this space for my february flip through so my daily i also changed this <laughs> in a couple of ways so the first thing was you'll see here i had these pages that i'd made myself which were kind of monthly planner sheets um which i could put like forward planning stuff on and yeah, they were fine, but I just felt like they take up too much space. And again, I think this is a big, a bit of a hangover of mine from being in a slimline planner for so long. And so then I moved over to these. They're really awesome. I actually do really like these ones. So basically you have here a little month and then you can highlight the days and you can write at the side what that corresponds with. So it's really good for forward planning if you don't have the pages already in your planner. So I really like this. Um, I am having a brain blank at the moment and I can't remember where I got these from, but they were free and I will link them below because they are awesome. In terms of my daily planning, here we are. I went back to the week on a page. Um, it's just something I'm really comfortable with and I feel like this file effects insert is really good. I'm really comfortable with it. It works, it works really well. So I had a couple of weeks of that where I was... I want to say trying to use my running to-do list, but honestly, yeah, I didn't really use it at all, to be honest. As you can see, there's not really much happening here. And I think it's just because I was finding it so different that I didn't do any planning for a couple of weeks, which actually defeats the purpose of the planner. So I have now um, actually just gone back to what I was doing for the last few years and it's worked quite well, which is just having the week on a page, putting a piece of paper in between, which is like a to-do list. 
I'm going to do it a bit like a bullet journal. So when it's been done, I'll cross it off. And then if it's going to go across the next kind of fortnight's to-do list, I'll do a little arrow and put it across there. And these, who knows, these I could probably just get rid of once they're all done. Um, I'm trying to, when I've done stuff, kind of write them in on the days that they've been done. So they still have a record of them, but yeah. So that's that. Oh, and also I got these really, really cute Midori dog stickers. So I've just kind of like popped them through. All right, next section. And also another change. <laughs> so I was going to be having my journal pages in with my diary pages, which is kind of what I did last year. And then this year I was trying a different kind of week on two pages insert so I could have everything all together. A big a big thing for me this year has been um, trying to journal more. So I was just like, hey, why not? Let's just separate it out. <laughs> I made this little divider page here from um, a little composite notebook, which I really love. Journal. Next thing I've got is this 30 day journal challenge. It's actually from Passion Planner. I'm not doing this as like a 30 days, got to get it done. Um, I had this here as a more of a prompt in case I couldn't think of something to journal of but as it turns out I have not had that issue and then behind that is my journal so here we go now this is on Tomoe River paper I changed up my paper as well um, I absolutely love the feel of this it's just great and not that you can fit a lot in I think I have like 100 sheets so that's pretty amazing this has worked really well for me I've put some kind of margins on each side as well just so that, that my writing is a bit more uniform and I will continue to use this and it's great because it is just a bit of paper and I have uh, quite a few of these sheets so if I need to replace it it's, it's going to be incredibly easy to replace so this has been working out really well I'm really happy with that and I'm also really happy with the Tamori River paper so I will keep going with that health section honestly I actually haven't even looked at it and <laughs> finance section I've put my financial goals in here but I haven't really done much towards them yet so there we go <laughs> notes so my notes section I have used this a little bit I wasn't using it as much because I've been using this more as a journal than a planner rather than both. I have done a couple of little lists this week for like just got some packing lists for some trips that I've got coming up. And that's it really. Let's move on to my favourites for January. Obviously this planner has been a favourite of mine. It's been really strange being in something with such big rings. I just love all of the space. I love the slip pockets here. I love this huge gusseted zip pocket at the back here. It's amazing. The zip is protected as well, which is really good. Um, so this has been a favourite of mine. Other favourites. So I started off the month with the, this black Quebeco Skyline Sport with Medium Nib being my all-time favourite pen. Um, I love it. Um, originally, um, when I first started out with Quebeco, I got this Quebeco Coconut with a extra fine nib. And um, I liked it, but I didn't love it. And I think it kind of held me back from the Quebeco Spots. But when I got this one, and I was like, hey, I'll just try it in a medium nib. Let's see how we go. Because um, I'd heard that... Caveco nibs are slightly finer than standard size nibs. I don't know if that's true. I'd say it is kind of a medium, but this writes so beautifully. I figured, you know what, hey, I'm just going to jump in and I'm going to get another Caveco. So I ended up getting this, which has now become my absolute favorite pen of all time. <laughs> And it's the Caveco Brass Spot. Now, it's quite weighty. It's a medium nib as well. And I was I was just hoping, I was really hoping that the nib on this would be even like a fraction as good as the nib on the black Skyline Spot. And it's even better. Like, it's amazing. It writes so nicely. I absolutely love this pen. It's just fantastic. And it's already, like, I've had this less than a month and it's already starting to get this really nice patina which like if i just move the clip i don't know if you can see that but it's just yeah it's already getting this really beautiful patina i decided to go with the chrome clip just to match the chrome um detailing on the pen it's just absolutely beautiful maybe if i open this up actually there you go look you can kind of see here and just listen to this that is 
up there like for for pens for this month as much as i love the black skyline spot the caveca brass spot is just oh like a gift from the gods it's beautiful i love it okay so that's pens and then ink for the pens so you see that there was a cartridge in there that is a cartridge of poussière de lune which is just a really beautiful purple so i'm still on this quest to find the best purple ink um you know as as with old journeys they're not always linear and i have strayed off into browns and coppers grays and greens <laughs> but the the quest for the best purple ink continues and this has got to be up there to be honest i'll show you a swatch of this this is swatched on the Tomoe River paper. It's just a really beautiful kind of, I don't say muted purple. If you've never seen one of the J. Bon ink bottles, you can rest your pen. How cute. I'm really loving this. I've got it in cartridges. I purchased the bottle as well. I will be definitely using this quite a lot. It's a really lovely purple. It's quite similar, if you can see from this swatch, it's quite it's quite similar to the Caveco Summer Purple, but still enough of a difference for them to be their own unique inks. I just love the, the flow of this ink. It's an absolute pleasure to write with in this glorious Caveco brass spot. It's been an absolute dream. As I mentioned, I have strayed off from the purple ink journey. Another ink that I've been really loving this month has been the Diamine Ancient Copper. Really consistent flow, really nice shading. I'll put up a swatch of this on the screen as well. Yeah, great ink. I have used the little Caveco Spot converter a bit as well this month. And I have found that using this with a medium nib, in a Caveco spot gives me 14 pages of writing on personal size tomorrow river paper if anyone's interested next up for favorites for this month i'm gonna say this pen pouch which i will do a full review on this is specifically for Caveco spots and it's just brilliant i got this from etsy from a, a seller called roomy leather goods I'll link them below. They custom made this for me re with a really fast turnaround and it's honestly perfect. It's their design, but they had a little note on the listing that said, if you want like a different color, etc., message me and ask. So I messaged and asked for it in black with the silver zip. And they don't normally use silver zips, but yet they managed to find one for me, which I think is just really incredible customer service. It's really well made. It's so compact. Look at this. Oh my God, I love this. Okay, I really love it. I'll do a separate video on this case because it's just amazing, but just a really quick look for you. So here we go. You've got the, the slot for three Caveco spots. I've actually got a Caveco sketch up there, um, but three Caveco spot pens. And then in here, you've got like a little space where you can put all of your inks and stuff that can go aside. But this, I can't not mention it in my favorites for January because... I absolutely love it. And then I think my last favorite for January has to be my desk. So I was very fortunate this month to be able to pick up a um, vintage Art Deco Writers Bureau, which is this lovely desk that I'm writing on now. It's just the perfect little space to do journaling and um, it's a home for all of my writing instruments and my paper and my planners and my inks and I just I absolutely love it it just feels this is it, this is like my special place now <laughs> so I actually picked this up on Facebook marketplace for 40 Australian dollars which is a crazy bargain it's got the original key the locks work and it's Australian made as well which is really cute because um I don't know I'm not from here so I think it's cool so that's it for this video what have you been loving in the first month of 2023 have you made any new discoveries this month please leave a comment down below i would absolutely love to hear your suggestions based on the favorites that i've mentioned is there anything that you would recommend i hope you have a lovely day thank you so much for watching bye